Hello everyone, this is Delster, and welcome to another episode review for Dark Side of the Ring. And in this episode, it talks about the lives of Road Warriors, Animal, and Hawk. Unfortunately, the Road Warriors are no longer here with us, but they are considered one of the biggest tag teams in wrestling. I remember WWE were releasing a DVD of the Road Warriors, and days later, Animal comes out and helps Heidenreich on an episode of SmackDown against Eminem. They would then become a tag team, but it did not last long. I will go over the episode first and explain my thoughts at the end. Both Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal, grew up in the northeast of Minneapolis. Hawk's real name was Michael Mike Hegstrand and would not sit still as a kid as he was considered hyperactive. Mike's mother passed away during his childhood. During his school days, Mike would go to different schools because he would beat up anyone who crossed his path. He would also hit himself in order to be conditioned. However, Mike would break his teeth in the process. Mike was then voted class bully during those years. As for Road Warrior Animal, his real name was Joe Laurinaitis and happened to be related to John Laurinaitis. Not a good person to be related to. If you know, you know. When he was a young adult, Joe trained at Jesse Ventura's gym. Joe and Mike first met at the gym when Joe was 18 years old. He whacked Joe and told him to lift more weights. Mike was also known as a loose cannon or a tough guy. Eventually, Joe and Mike worked at a bar called Grandma B's as it was considered a tough bar where they could beat up people. When they worked at the bar, Joe and Mike helped a previous owner from the bar get his money back from another guy who owed him. They each got the man's legs and had him hanging over a bridge so that the guy could pay up to the owner. One of the bartenders from the bar happened to be Eddie Sharkey, who wrestled in the AWA. Eddie asked Mike and Joe if they wanted to wrestle in his school, which at first they did not want to. They eventually ended up going to Eddie's school, where it was downstairs at a church with a boxing ring. There were a lot of wrestlers training in Minneapolis at the time with the road warriors such as Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, Scott Norton, Nikita Koloff, and Rick Rude. One day, Joe escorted a guy from the bar and landed on Ollie Anderson's shoes. He recruited Joe in his Georgia wrestling territory first. As for Mike, he was in Al Tonko in Canada, which was far from Joe. When he wrestled in Georgia, Joe had wrestling gear that looked similar to the village people, as said by Joe himself. Joe was known as the Road Warrior by himself back then. The reason why Joe went to Georgia was because he wanted to provide for his girlfriend as they were expecting their first child together and would then get married. When Ed showed a picture of Mike to Ollie, Ollie thought it was Joe at first and was surprised that there were two of them. Ollie wanted to bring Mike in his territory and get him and Joe to be a tag team that we would all know as of today as the Road Warriors. It was the year of 1983 when Joe and Mike were recruited as the tag team, the Road Warriors, and made their debut at Georgia Championship Wrestling. They were immediately given the tag team belts from Ali, as the titles were brand new in GCW. Paul Ellering would be the wrestling manager for the Road Warriors, and he managed them for about 20 years. Even off-screen, Paul still managed them. How the Road Warriors received their names was through Ali Anderson. Ollie th told Joe that he looked like an animal and so he gave him the name Animal as well as Hawk because he looked like a hawk. When they were planning their matches, Paul helped the Road Warriors come up with wrestling movements and their wrestling attires. Mike, however, came up with the idea of the Road Warriors donning the mohawks for their gimmicks. Animal thought of the idea of having spiked shoulder pads. He had a friend make the 4-6 to six inch spikes and put them on the shoulder pads. In wrestling, the Road Warriors would hit their opponents really hard as some of the wrestlers considered the Road Warriors dangerous to work with. Paul had the Road Warriors booked all over the world such as AWA and Carlos Colon's Puerto Rico promotion. Joe then realized that they hit it big once they went to New Japan as many camera people were there to see the tag team. Over in Japan, they found the Road Warriors unique from all the other wrestlers. The Road Warriors wrestled with Killer Khan when they were in Japan as Killer Khan was a big wrestler over there. While wrestling in Japan, Mike got involved with the Japanese Mafia and would party a lot. In 1986, the Road Warriors were considered top agents all around the world and had sold out crowds. They eventually went babyface and were offered a deal with Jim Crockett Promotions. The Jim Crockett Promotions wanted the Road Warriors to do a scaffold match with the Midnight Express. 
A scaffold match is a match that uses scaffolds that look like the ones construction workers would use when they are doing construction on buildings or making new buildings. Wrestlers are above the ring and must push their opponents as they are hanging. Before they had their match with the Midnight Express, Hawk had broken a small bone on his leg but went forward with the scaffold match. Hawk did not want to let the people down, so he went forward with the match. The Road Warriors won the match, but this led Hawk to sink into addiction once he and Animal went to NWA and WCW right before joining the WWF. Hawk would drink vodka and take muscle relaxers in order to help with his muscle pain. Once the duo went to the WWF, Hawk's addiction was out of control. Around the time that the Road Warriors went to WWF, Vince McMahon wanted to change their names because they had other wrestlers using the name Warrior for the wrestling character, such as the Ultimate Warrior and Kerry Von Erich, who was also called the Modern Day Warrior. Vince had the Road Warriors go by the name Legion of Doom. However, Paul said in the episode that the Legion of Doom name was inspired by the He-Man cartoon show that the Road Warriors were into. As Hawk and Animal worked on a full-time schedule, their injuries also increased as they had to work through the pain. In one situation, the Road Warriors were at a club and did a finisher move as they were supposedly told by Vince to do so. Hawk started to fail drug tests and was not shy about taking drugs in front of everyone. At WrestleMania in Wembley Stadium, Hawk and Animal had a match for the tag team titles. Before they had started their match, Vince was explaining ideas to the Road Warriors until Vince got angry because Hawk pitched an idea while he was on Placidils. Placidils are a hallucinogenic drug that helps with insomnia and takes hours to wear off. Once the match had started, Hawk was in no shape to wrestle as he was really out of it due to the drugs. They could not do their finisher as Hawk would have fallen off the turnbuckle due to him being on the substance. Animal was not happy at Hawk for the result of the match and wanted to part ways with Hawk after the match. When Animal and Paul were in Hershey, Pennsylvania, Hawk had called and said that he quit as he did not show up for the match that he was supposed to be scheduled for in Pennsylvania. Soon after, Animal went solo and was known as the Fixer in other wrestling promotions. Mike then had issues with other promoters that he had worked with after leaving Doidoi. Hawk then went to Japan for a better deal and worked with a new tag team partner named Kensuke Sasaki, who was known as the Power Warrior. He had taken the Road Warrior gimmick to Japan as he formed a new partnership. Animal was not happy about this. Without Animal and Paul, Hawk had spiraled as he would go to the emergency rooms multiple times for drug overdoses and once had a head-on collision with no seatbelt on him. Hawk eventually got diagnosed with hepatitis C due to him trying a variety of drugs. Somehow, Hawk had been able to cure his hepatitis C with interferon, and the doctor told Hawk that he could do whatever he wanted now that he was cured. In his mind, Hawk had thought that he could drink and party again. In 1997, WWF offered Hawk and Animal another chance to wrestle there, and they accepted. Once they returned to WWF, they had the Road Warriors add a third member to the team, and that wrestler was Straws, who was 29 at the time. Vince had the idea of using Hawk's real-life problems in order for him to come out to the ring drunk and get Animal to kick out Hawk, and have the Road Warriors only be Animal and Draws. One of those storylines had Hawk climbed at the top of the Titantron, which is the huge big TV thing used for entrances. Animal said in the episode that putting Hawk's substance abuse issues bothered him as it was too close to Hawk's real life. The Road Warriors eventually left WWF and went to Australia, where they went to an area and drank. The drinks, however, had a mixture of Xanax, Coke, and muscle relaxers that would affect Hawk. Hawk was suffering from cardiomyopathy, as Animal saw him laying on the floor with the paramedics trying to help him. After Hawk arrived at the hospital, he called Animal to pick him up because Hawk did not want to die in Australia. Animal decided to go pick up Hawk from the hospital even though it was against doctor's orders and took Hawk back to Tampa, Florida. The Road Warriors then went their separate ways. Months later, Animal joined a program called the Christian Power Team, which Hawk had also joined got baptized and gave his life to the Lord. Hawk eventually got married and seemed to be on a better path until October 19, 2003. Animal got a call from a friend and was told that Hawk had passed away. 
Mike was 46 and died as his heart had stopped. The last person who saw Mike alive was his wife, Dale. Animal called Paul and told him that Hawk had died. After he received the news, Paul and his wife drove up in a black van as fast as they could in order for them to go to Hawk's funeral. Once he was at the funeral, Paul did the eulogy for Hawk. Hawk's friends in the episode said that he was a really nice guy that people liked to be around with. Wrestlers such as Barry Darso and Nikita Koloff praised the Road Warriors and how good they were. Animal said that he respected Hawk 99.9% of the time when they were on the road. He also said in the episode that when Hawk died, so did the wrestling business. Interviewers for this episode are Joe Animal Laurinaitis, Barry Darso, Repo Man or Demolition Smash, Paul Ellering, the Road Warriors manager, Nikita Koloff, Rich Hegstrand, Road Warrior Hawk's older brother, Dan Hegstrand, Road Warrior Hawk's younger brother, Scott Norton, Eddie Sharkey, The Godfather, Charles Wright, and Darren Drozdov, Draws. This episode was pretty good and I give it an 8 out of 10. It felt a little rushed at the end as I was hoping for a little more of Joe talking about Mike. Unfortunately, Joe died on September 22nd, 2020, months after this episode had aired. They may be gone, but their work and wrestling attire will live on forever. I loved it when Animal came out to help Heidenreich and won the tag team titles from Eminem, which I think was at the Great American Bash. Afterwards, Animal said on the mic that this win was for Hawk. It was a good run until Heidenreich got released all of a sudden and Animal's run just never got better afterwards as he was put as a jobber. I always thought that the Road Warriors were scary because of the shoulder pads, mohawks, and makeup, but they did have a cool gimmick. Some interesting facts about the Road Warriors is that not only did Paul manage them, but so did Sonny in the 90s, during the Attitude Era, and Christy Hemi in the 2000s. It was mostly valets, as some women back in the day did not wrestle much. They were the first wrestlers to bring a movie theme to the wrestling world and use it as a gimmick. Their armor and face paint was inspired by the Mad Max movie, The Road Warriors, from 1981. Throughout their career, the Road Warriors had tag team titles in wrestling promotions such as GCW, All Japan Pro Wrestling, AWA, Fighting World of Japan Pro Wrestling, Independent Pro Wrestling, Jim Crockett Promotions, I Generation Superstars of Wrestling, NWA, WCW, and WWF, now WWE. Both have been in many Hall of Fames, but were inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2011. The Road Warriors are in the WWE video games as well as WCW and Legends of Wrestling video games. Mike was born on January 26, 1957 in St. Paul, Minnesota. He used to be known as Crusher Von Hag in Catch Wrestling Association. Hawk was a CWA World Heavyweight Champion as the rest of his title history is tag team titles with Road Warrior Animal. When Hawk died, he recently bought a home with his wife Dale and was working on a book with Animal. Hawk won the NWA World Six Man Tag Team Championship title with Animal and Dusty Rhodes. Two with Dusty, one with a wrestler named Kinichiro Tenri. His last match was a tag team match with Animal as they wrestled against Greg Valentine and Buff Bagwell. Hawk was married twice and never had kids. Animal was born on September 12, 1960 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He grew up in Minnesota. In the all-in pay-per-view, before AEW took it, Animal made an appearance in 2018. His last match in WWE was with Heat Slater in 2012. The last wrestling promotion that he was a part of was SWE Fury in 2020. Animal was supposed to be a wrestling manager but passed away that year. Like Hawk, Animal was married twice and had three kids. His son James was in the Rams and Saints football teams. Animal's brothers, John and Marcus, were also wrestlers. In July 2016, Animal was a part of the lawsuit that was against WWE, where many wrestlers claimed that they received traumatic brain injuries. It was dismissed in September 2018. Animal, Hawk, and Paul were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2011, and Dusty was the one to induct them. As for Paul, he is still a manager in WWE, but for the Authors of Pain. They also formed an alliance with Karrion Cross and his wife Scarlett Bordix, who are all known together as the Final Testament. That's pretty much all I have, and boy, what a rush. Thank you guys for watching this. 
episode review, and until next time, take care of your mental health and everyone around you, and I'll do the same too. Bye, guys.